ready to be the nitty gritty yarn girl. It's Monday night and this is Twisted Stitches. I hope you all had a great day. I know we certainly did here and dealing with the change of seasons and the, and the weather changes. So uh, we have got a, a night that is packed with amazing and fantastic yarns and fashions from Jody Long and Jody Long Knits. And we are so fortunate to have Jody here with us tonight. So uh, welcome, Jody. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me, Paula. I'm well, great. Thank you for being here. And um, I, our, the show has been doing, we've been really busy on the show. So Paula is going to be in charge of, uh, of all the comments that come in along the way. And we'll just keep chatting until he interrupts us so that uh, we can say hi to our fans and, and just kind of keep the, the show moving along at the same time. All good with you? Cool. Excellent. Oh, wow. We've so, had a bunch of comments already. Look at that. <laughs> We've got Kitsy Demeray. Hi from Cortland, New York. Mm -hmm. Helen Solenberger. Happy Monday from Buffalo. And Nancy McClellan Ball. Nancy McClellan Ball says hello from West Hartford. I wonder if she knows Mike Larkin. The, here we go again. <laughs> Leticia Castro. Hello from Miami, Florida. And Anna Maria Milani. Hi, Paul, Paulette, and Jody. Leslie Welsh Flaherty. Hello, everyone. And Bryce Wonders. Hello. Multiple exclamation points. Looking forward to the show. Hey, Jody, did you see this? Did you happen to see our Facebook Live yesterday? We had such I, fun. I didn't see it. Sorry. No, that's okay. You don't have to because look what we have in our... <laughs> <laughs> We have we do have such fun on the show, and we've been we've been working with our fans and and asking them to share the show and to share the different posts that we have. And every time they do, their name goes into the sharing bucket, and um, then we pull names for for gifts and prizes. So we've got some great prizes from from Jody Long Yarns uh, tonight, and we're going to be sending those off to some lucky folks. Donna says hello from Torrington, Connecticut. <laughs> Helen Solenberger. Hi, Jody and Paulette and Paul. Andrea Whitmore. Hi, Paul and Paulette from Indiana. And Carolyn Noller from Virginia. Hey there. Kathy Stoddard. Hello from Wichita, Kansas. Hello, my, no, happy Monday. Julie Anderson Galuski says hello. <laughs> and Heather Campbell shared. Heather's up to, uh, Heather knows what's going Heather on. Heather knows what's going on. Sharing is caring. And Charlene Demers Hill. Hi, everyone. And Rochelle Worth Price gives the waving hand emoji. Whoa, and more. All right. Well, we're going to have to get into the show. So we're going to go back and we're going to say hi to all our fans. We're so glad you're here. Be sure to share your comments and your thoughts with us as we go along. Why are you laughing? Because it's funny. I can't keep up with it tonight. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So, Jody, tell us about uh, your two new yarns that we're going to be talking to about tonight. We've got uh, Glam Haze and Andiamo, who is going to take up probably the crux of the show. And then if we have a little bit more time, well, we're going to be doing Alba as well. So, tell us about Glam Haze, because I'm oh. really loving this. Yeah, year. I'm really excited when I pulled that one together. So I want to see something on trend for autumn winter. And when I was looking around the yarn fairs, there was a lot of glitz and mohair and a lot of chunky knits. So I thought, you know, like put all the yarns together and just come up with this mohair fashion kind of yarn. And it's kind of worked out pretty well. And it really, it really is, it really is a fashion yarn and it is, it is yeah. also beautiful. And I love that it's a bulky yarn. But the yardage is huge as well. The garments really don't take many balls to knit either. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look what we've got here. We have, let's see, there are 109 yards on here. for, And that's great for a, a bulky yarn. And we've got super fine alpaca and mohair. I just love working with it. Um, it, it it's really easy to work with. And I just love that little glimmer. So let's start off by... Um, Talking about this cute little, this is what is that the wish sweater? I think is the name of it. The wish, yeah. Yes. That's so the wish this sweater. one is very trendy. It's aimed more for the younger person or, you know, someone that wants to knit for the younger person as well. Mm -hmm. um, it comes in from the waist out to the bust. Yeah, I love that little crop fit. I remember when I used to wear those. <laughs> 
I bet a lot of people wish they had that one. <laughs> but it's also very economical to knit as well. It starts from, I think, four balls of yarn. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a pretty yep. really good value kit if you're going to kit that up as well. Uh, yeah, and I I love the color that it's worked up here. And we've got so many beautiful colors in this yarn. It's it, the colors are are from vibrant to very very classic and subdued, like the navy and the the mink is gorgeous. Yeah, I mean the color palette took me around about two weeks to develop with the manufacturer because I wanted it to range from every color in eight colors I had. Sorry, twelve colors I had. Uh -huh. And you'll find there's six colors with gold thread and six colors with silver thread in them as well. Yeah. So here's, you can see the difference. This one's got the silver and then the mink has the gold. So really, really pretty. Very, very pretty. And the wish card again is on our website. And so I will, if we don't have a chance to get all those links up for you tonight, while we're on the show, I'll be posting them after the show. Uh, so does anyone have any questions for Jody on the Wish sweater? I know we've sold a few of these already to some folks. And um, if you have some questions for Jody, please feel free to jump in and address them to him so that we're sure to uh, to put him on the spot a couple of times while we're on the show yeah. tonight. Ooh, thanks for that. <laughs> Fever and Euro Yarn shared the, uh, the links. Oh, thanks. I didn't know if Nitty Fever and Euro Yarns yeah. would be on tonight. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, um, one of my favorites in the um, in the glam haze. I'm going to go to that one now. Is right over here, and I'm going to take my shawl off. And this, we, Jody, you and I were talking about this one before. This is called Bow. Want to tell us a little bit about this one? Okay, I wanted something again, modern, flattering, and easy to knit. So I went with, you know, very easy style, you know, easy V-neck. There's no neck border on that at all. So there's no picking up stitches. It's really ideal for the beginner on that. And it comes out again for the bust. So it's a bit more flattering for the fuller woman as well. And, you know, sure, I like the idea that, um, as you mentioned, it's an easy knit even for a newer knitter. Yeah, because there's no picking up around the neck. Nothing. Right. It's all knitted in one. And I love the way the neckline, how the, the glit, you know, the little metallic shows through really pretty on the neckline there. Very, very pretty. And again, the full variety of colors on the website in this. And um, I also noticed, Jody, your sizes go from small to double X on all the yeah, sizes, Yeah, they do. Right? It's got from a 32 to 34 inch bust, right up to a 48 to 50 inch bust. Yeah. That's before any ease has been put into the garment. Right, right. No, that's that's really great. So there's a nice variety of sizes on there um, for for all for all of our shapes and sizes that are out there. And the other thing I find as well that most knitters always knit up a bigger size than they really need, which sometimes can be not forgiven. I think it's best to measure your favorite jumper across the bust and look at the actual measurement, what the garment's going to knit up to, rather than think you're bigger than what you are as well. I, or, or think that we don't want it to be too confining or yeah. we don't want it to be, you know, too close fitting. So we go up a size and I've made that mistake. And, uh, and I think you and I have talked about that and, and, and I'm always disappointed when I'm, when I finish the sweater that I've gone that bigger size because you really yeah. don't need it, especially when you're knitting. Um, I've learned you know knitting more and more sweaters that they you know the the garment grows as you it knit it yeah. and so your gauge swatch isn't always necessarily true throughout the whole sweater yeah you should check your gauge all the time for your sweater very very good that's that's a that's a big help and i remember um one night i was watching a series i think it was on netflix uh the title was marcella and i loved the sweater that Marcella was wearing, the lead actress in the show. And I snapped a, a picture of the TV screen and sent it off to you and said, can you design this sweater? And you said, I did. It's it's in my newest book coming out. And it's very not that you designed that particular sweater, but something very similar to it. Yeah. So I'm anxious to get this on my needles. So this is called the bow. 
And we do have that on our website and that's available in all the colors of, of, of the, uh, of the glam haze rainbow. So I'm going to take a minute before we move on to our next garment and talk a little bit about the book itself, if you would, to tell us a little about the inspiration for the book and the different designs that you came up with in here. Cause they're the so pretty. The inspiration for the collection was classy, but wearable every day. So I wanted to, you know, glamorous, but wear it the other way, go shopping to the bars, you know, night out, everything. Yeah. And it really is. And it'll take you right into your holiday wear with, uh, you know, yeah. dark, you know, velvet slacks or a skirt or, you yeah. know, just something Especially really ruby classy. Color. And the ruby color is very, dare I say, Christmassy as well. Right. Yeah. So, so they'll, you know, they just said they lend themselves, the, the, the yarn lends itself to so many different yeah. Uh, wear, wearables. Probably. We've got some questions. Diane Gardner wants to know, check your gauge on sweater, question mark. What do you mean by that? Check your gauge on the sweater. Well, you're while you're knitting it, you mean? Jody, why don't you tell them what you mean by checking it while you're knitting it? Okay, what I mean is that you always start with a gauge swatch. So if the pattern says so many stitches to four inches, you should knit eight inches or minimum six inches. You should always work a minimum two inches more. Then when you measure that and you hit game, when you're knitting the garment, always re-measure the garment, you know, the stitches to four inches and make sure you're getting the same as what you was on your swatch. Okay. And Heather Campbell wants to know, Jody, what process leads up to, hey, I'm going to invent a new yarn today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's the seasons that I do. Four collections a year. So I do two in the winter and two in the summer. So it's kind of, you know, my job. I have to do it with the company I work with, you know, Knitting Fever, that's my distributor. They always say to me, what's coming next? What's coming next? And that kind of prompts me to get the next collection out there. And so do you follow any trends in, in different places to see what's happening? Do you, are there fashion uh, trends? trends? Trends, Paula, thank you. I'm sorry? <laughs> I don't have one of the trends. I've set the trends. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Good for you. Come on now. You know it's Jody Long. Jody Long <laughs> follows no one. Jody Long sets the pace. I, I do one. follow the trends. Yeah, I do. I think you've got to really to follow the trends to see what's coming out and then add your own twist on that as well. <laughs> well, well, I remember you saying there's going to be a lot of a lot of um, a lot of uh, mohair and a lot of glitter or glitz and yeah. in, in, you know in the fashions so i didn't realize that that was coming from your own head <laughs> <laughs> well i knew them she was coming but that's why i put the two together as well and then twisted them so that's what i mean i put my little twist onto the new yarns always and that's what and that's what makes your yarn so special and and, and just so much fun to to knit with and to see what's come you know what you've got coming out and uh so the elegance book is on our website there are nine beautiful designs for women's in there for women in there we've shown you two of them so far and let's go over to the animal print because this is a fun one this is cinder is the name of this pattern and it's got a you know a little bit of uh, something for everybody in here <laughs> a little bit when you're taking a walk on the wild side <laughs> I mean, this one is very trendy for the next winter coming up, like the winter ahead of us. There's going to be a lot of animal print, and there's a lot of bright animal print as well, using fuchsia, blues. and But again, with the color palette there, you're unlimited to the colors that you can do with this in. So you could make it really funky into a blue background with pink spots, everything. That'd be fun. Yep, again, put your own twist on it. Now, on our website, we have Cinder available or shown on the website in these colors we also have a link to all the glam haze colors so that you could put together your own kit so your your size chart and um and yarn requirements are on the actual pattern page and so you can take a look at that and then order your yarns you know to create your own custom kit uh, by going to the website because it's just a little bit hard to to decide which colors do you want to do your your uh, your person what what mood strikes you and so I thought I would do it that way for you the book is also sold separately on the website Heather Campbell wants to know Jody do you knit items for yourself or mostly gift uh, knitting 
or is all your knitting work related? Mostly work related. I did knit myself a garment years ago and I left it on a bus. <laughs> the only sweater <laughs> I could really out. It was so hot on the bus. I took it off and left it on the seat and never oh, got it. Oh, and I bet you never found that again. Lost and found no. was so happy to get yeah. that one. <laughs> wow, that's too bad. And you you're you're working on another sweater right now that you mentioned. Yeah, I'm working on one for my partner in uh, Lana Gatto, which is another one distributed by Knitting Fever. And yeah. So. so I look forward to seeing that one when it's done. That's not a design, that, but it's one of my old designs. Uh-huh. Well, that's using good. Young. You, you, how long, how, how many years have you been writing designs? Uh, 15 professionally. Wow. Yeah. wow. When I was 20, I started. Wow, that's amazing. And so you've got quite a few books under your belt there. I think it's 11 or 12 published books and about nine booklets. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's fabulous. 800 and, and designs. Sorry? I think it's about 800 or 900 designs in total. Wow. Well, yeah. congratulations. And, and, you. and you keep coming up with more and more. I don't know how you do it. I've just done 63 designs in the last three months. <laughs> Karen Bonavengo wants to know, Jody, do people knit for gifts for you? My nan used to. She used to make me toys. <laughs> I don't use toys. <laughs> <laughs> and so do you still, do you, did you, do you have a book of children's toys too? Yeah, it was my very first book I ever wrote. Okay. Maybe your Nana had some influence on that. She did, yeah. I'll bet. I'll bet. Especially <laughs> fire truck. So. A fire truck. Oh, how yeah. cute. That's adorable. Well, that's really great. Are there any other questions for now while well, we're we'll we'll just keep not at the along. moment. So uh oh. Ben. We will answer all your comments though, the ones that we missed earlier. Ben. <laughs> ben, you can't lay on Jody's sweat uh, shawl. Okay. So I'm going to put this one on because I think it is so pretty. There we go. Look how beautiful that is. And I can't see the name of it because the name is in the back of me. So I don't know what it is, but I do know it's on our website. <laughs> Can you see it, Paul? Yep. Hold on. Allure. Allure. Yeah, Valor. Oh, Valor. That's right. Valor. So beautiful. And I've got this up on the website and all the colors available. And it's, I like this because it's simple with the garter stitch. And it's kind of like um, the Devon shawl, how the Devon shawl had the pretty, well, of course it was done in a different manner, but the, you know, just the, the pretty edging on it with a simple stitch throughout. So tell us about this one. I wanted to, again, say easy, quick and satisfying for everyone. So, and it, I, I'm not a lover of doing borders separate, picking up vast amount of stitches and working the shawls either, because I'm a very quick knitter. I don't like to be doing it for weeks. So this one, I've just done a very basic shawl where you start increasing on the left-hand side and you work the border at the same time as the garter stitch. Oh, cool, okay. And when you get to the center point, you decrease. Okay, so we go down to the center and then we come back the other way. And it's a nice size too. So it's, 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 you know, nice to wrap up. I was thinking it's pretty if you're, even if you're out for a day in, in the, in the cold and you're sitting around a fireplace later on, it's casual enough to, and, and simple enough to just wrap yourself up in it. And yet elegant enough to wear to a dinner party or to a holiday party. Really very pretty. Brenda Dixonberger says, Valor shawl is lovely. Love the yarn. Yeah, you're gonna love you're gonna love this yarn. It has beautiful texture. I love the halo on it. It's just it's it was really fun to work with. I I can't wait. This is this is on my list, folks. In fact, um, one of uh, one of my customers said to me the other when I said I she said I love it. I love it. I said I do too. And she said okay, let's knit it together. So I'm hoping that we can we can do that. Maybe we'll do a little knit along with it. That'd be, That'd cool. be fun because that it's an easy enough sweater to do. Hmm. Okay. Moving on. The yarn as well is the 
metallic fiber and there's not scratchy one single bit it's really it's not it's yeah. not at all it feels like, more it feels more soft and fluffy to the touch yeah. as opposed to scratchy yeah light and, light and fluffy yeah. <laughs> a lot of the metallic fiber can be quite rough and irritating right right no that's it's really very very nice to work with um and then we've got this that you know it just takes You've got a simple V-neck sweater here, and then we move over to this with a diamond pattern, the diamond lace pattern, and this is called Blythe. And look how pretty the gold glitter, the gold metallic works through there. And this was a little more shape to it, doesn't it, Jody? than the- um, Yeah, this one's in at the waist and out for the bust, this one. Yeah, very, very pretty. And yeah, the back is simple, very much the same. I like the way I like the simple collar on it. Really very nice. And that one worked from a chart as well, but yes. All the shaping is shown on the chart for the first pattern repeat, and then you know it sets the pattern that way. So, so is yeah. is it charted and written as far as no, the only chart? Charts for the for the yeah. design. Yeah. Yeah. Heather Campbell wants to know, Jody, so what oh, so what is Christmas like for a knit designer? Do you gift everyone your books and simple knits? <laughs> no, I normally just give them money. They just buy whatever they want. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> you can't go wrong with money. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And all the shops as well. How, how many of you all who are watching knit gifts or crochet gifts for the holidays. I'd be curious to see that and see what we get for an answer on that one. Um, so while we're waiting for that, is, are those all, I think those are all the Glam Haze garments we have. So, what? no, we have more uh, other things, but we're, that's the Glam Haze. So I think what we might do is pull a couple of names for some Glam Haze. Whoa. Okay, let's see, we've got, um, I think I can do, I can do. Three. Tell them what they're gonna win, Paulette. They're, each person is. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do three drawings. Each person is gonna win one skein of glam haze, which would be enough to make a hat. Am I right, Jody? Maybe you'll get a hat out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, we're gonna let Jody pull the name out of the hat <laughs> or out of the box. Why is my face in there? <laughs> we're getting more and more names yeah we sharing need, is caring we need to have a little bucket you want to pull the name out paul What's your... all right all right enough suspense <laughs> okay oh we're down to it ah jillian goldridge jillian Yay, goldridge jillian. congratulations you're the first winner today on the price is right on the on the sharing is right so I'm gonna take a skein over here, ball of yarn, and put it here for Jillian. Okay, let's pull another one out. Just another, another. What are you cooking? And the second winner is Leticia <laughs> Castro from Miami, Florida. You did it. You finally won. <laughs> Congratulations. And now our lucky winner number three. Yay. Okay. Whoa. This is very exciting tonight. <laughs> it's always exciting, but even more exciting when we're giving away yarn, okay. especially Jody Long yarn. People love winning the prizes, Jody. Okey And the winner is Francine S. Rogers. So Francine, you are a win, another winner for the Glam Haze yarn. So that's three Glam Hazes. Yay! Good for us. All righty. Right. Remember, sharing is caring. Every time you share, it goes into the bucket, and you never know who's going to win the next yarn. So. Thank you so much for that. And now we're going to move on to our, uh, to Jody's other new yarn and second book for the fall and winter. And this is, 
I call it Hygi, but I'm not sure that's the way we pronounce it. We pronounce Hoogie. 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 Okay. All right. Hoogie. Hoogie. <laughs> so, so we, the folks here, our fans have seen a little bit of Alba because I remember when the yarn was first coming out, I was able to snag some some skeins and I whipped up a quick um, uh, vest. So we have seen this a little bit before, but we've got so many beautiful colors now and such great fashions that you've designed, Jody. Tell us about Andiamo. Okay, Andiamo. Well, to go with the name of the yarn, it was it's kind of it's Peruvian anyway. So I wanted like Amo, which is love, and Andes. So I thought, okay, I can't with the word Andiamo. Oh, how cute is that? Means, Let's go in Italian. Once I put it in. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find your Peruvian wool became an Italian yarn. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love the name. I really do. Being Italian heritage myself, I think it's fantastic. And um, this, tell us about the yarn itself. So the yarn itself is eighty-five percent Peruvian Highland wool with fifteen percent alpaca. So it's got that bit of alpaca for a bit more softness to the Highland yarn. It's really big needles for this yarn. But it's, again, the yardage is huge for extra bulky yarn. It really is. We would have 175 yards on each skein, and it works up so quickly. I just love the projects, yeah. and I love how fast they go up. So, Paul, why don't you show well, It's a big skein as well. It's 200 grams. Yes. Sounds like your cameraman, extra bulky. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? Look at the colors. They're such fun. I love designing color palettes. This is really, it's, I, I love the, I love orange and I think the oranges in here, the, the, the pumpkin and the fire are such great colors. Harvest, I mean, they're just all beautiful. I think the pink and orange really pop if they were together as well. Yes, yep. Um, you can look at the dark blue with them as well. Yep. Like a really funky sweater. Yep, oh, great idea. Real pretty. So the colors are great, and the, the color palette is great in this um, uh -oh. in this yarn. Oops, what happened? Okay. Nothing. Okay, good. I'm glad nothing happened. Um, and the designs that you that you have created are really very very fun and um, and just beautiful with this. So let's start down here, Paul, with the fuchsia sweater, the little cardigan that we have here, and this is called Maya. So with yours up. <laughs> so I love the simple buttons on this. So tell us all about Maya here. Okay, Maya is just completely in garter stitch. So I was aiming again for the beginner because it's big needles, big yarn, quick to knit, and very rewarding when you're a beginner. We garter stitch and be able to knit a garment as well. Right. Um, yes. There's hardly any shaping in that garment apart from the raglans. Interesting. There, there is a, as you said, there's not hardly any shaping in it. Yet it, when I, I actually tried it on, and it, it just the yarn is so springy that it feels yes. nice against you. Yeah. And I love the back, the the low hem in the back. You've got the high low hem line on that. Just to keep it more modern as well. It's a very simple garment. Onto that little element of modern. Yeah, really pretty. Heather Campbell wants to know, Jody, Paul, Paulette, what are your favorite colors? Ooh. Mine's purple and that was orange. Mine. Purple and yellow are my favorites. Purple and orange. <laughs> purple and orange. How about you, Paul? Do you have a favorite? I like color? purple, like Barney purple. <laughs> <laughs> Barney purple. It makes you smile, doesn't it? Oh, Barney purple. <laughs> so you will find Maya on the website, and that's available in all the different colors. And um, the only thing you'll need to get with that are the buttons because we don't have the buttons. We and don't, don't forget, Maya could be yours up. Oh, good grief. Never mind. Don't don't humor him. Do not humor him. Okay, let's move on. You're going to have to do a little about face here. And uh, Jody, tell us about this interesting sh the interesting scarf here. This is called Alma. Now, there are a couple of different uh, garments in the Alma group. There is, yes, because they can all be worn together. <laughs> cool. Okay, so let's start off with the Alma scarf. Okay, with the scarf, it was, it's a bundle of my swatches throughout the whole book. <laughs> oh, is that <laughs> what it is? 
Kind of, yeah. I was like swatching the double moss stitch for the one of the garments, the fisherman ribs for the hat. Then the bubbles come just out of nowhere. And the ridge stitch was going to be a sweater, but it didn't come to life. And I just thought this is going to make a really good textured scarf. And that's where it's come from. Just a bundle of swatches turned into and, a scarf. And it really does make a great scarf. So, you know, you just, you just talked about the fisherman rib. Tell us what's the difference between fisherman rib or how the difference in creating fisherman's rib as opposed to a simple, you know, your simple knit to pearl to rib that we're all we all know about okay so fisherman ribs you knit on the right side and then on the wrong side you knit what oh, you got me now yeah the right, <laughs> side, right side facing you knit one row plain and then the wrong side which is we show on your right side the ribbon is knit one below pearl one knit one below pearl one okay, okay. so you go into the row below every alternate stitch which then like pulls it up so basically when you do fisherman rib you're doing two rows for every row of knitting yeah. it's so springy and stretchy yeah it's great it's great so you know what i'm also thinking jody is this is probably a great pattern for someone who's learning who, yeah who's a newer knitter who wants to practice different stitches absolutely you know I mean, you want to, you want to increase your 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 dip, your variety of stitches that you feel comfortable working with this is a great way to to do that but you could also knit a couple of them and sew them together to make a blanket as well absolutely what a great idea yeah what a great idea excellent so the maya scarf is on the website and we'll show you a couple of other items from the maya collection as well paul do we have some comments there or were you i thought you were trying to Say something. Heather says, "Oh, Paul, you so silly." Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Heather. Um, okay, so another another item in the Maya collection is the hat. And so this is that's a fisherman's rib, or is that a regular? That's a fisherman. That's a normal rib going into fisherman's rib. Yeah. So we got and the rib. Recent at the crown also holds all the patterns still in. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Very interesting. And a great pom pom on the top, great pom. So this is the Alma hat, and, that and then we have Alma one gloves. Skein, one skein project as well. Yes, yes, one skein project. Are the gloves a one skein as well? Yes, one skein as well. Yeah. But so look at these. It, my daughter would be loving these gloves. I'm telling you, this is like her favorite thing. Look at that. And then you turn the hem back as well, Paula. Okay, I got it, Jody. Oh. So it shows the fisherman rib again on that side. Fun. Really great. And I love this color. It just really shows off the yarn so nicely. Is this just, these are fun knits to do. And uh, I asked before how many of you give gifts for the holidays. These are some great one skein projects to do for the holidays. And uh, you're just going to love working on them. The hat itself is less than three hours to knit. For who? <laughs> For no, I, I, I'm sure it works up really fast. I absolutely really sure fast. it works up really or fast. 20 minutes for Janzy. Or 20 minutes for Janzy. That's right. We have, I have a dear friend who is probably the fastest there. I'm, until I met you. And then I saw your hands moving on that within those needles. And I've never seen anything move that fast in my right. life. I knit right about two and a half to three stitches a second. Two and a half to three stitches a second. Yeah, does I'm it not... matter? Does it make a difference, Jody, if you're knitting with bulky yarn or no, finer not totally. yarn? No. no, it's just I knit continental, and I've just people always think I'm trying to impress them, but it really is not. It's my normal, relaxed speed. I can't <laughs> slow down. I can speed up, but I can't slow down. It's... <laughs> Sounds like my life. <laughs> Well, you're, it, that's great. Do we get any responses from folks about do they give gifts for the holidays? Uh, let's see. You know, there are so many comments. We're going to have to answer the comments later. There okay. are so many that came through. Okay, that's all right. And you all, you all know we love you, and we're going to do our best to get. To Emma many. Rose Atkins says, "Great gifts." Oh, great gifts! There we go. Yes, Pamela does lots of gifts for the holidays. 
I want to be on Pamela's gift list. I'll tell you that. <laughs> she's just some, has, she's knitting up some beautiful things for the holidays. Helen Solenberger says, I knit hats, scarves, cowls, and sometimes blankets. There you no. go. That's great. Boy, you guys are ambitious. I used to knit for myself and, and, and for gifts, and now I just knit to make sure that we have lots of goodies here for all of you. Ooh, Rebecca Pagano, I knit gifts. Love to knit sweaters and dresses for my young nieces. Oh, that's great. And especially hats for friends. Well, you know, if, if you've not seen Jody Long's chow, you're going to need to take a look at that yarn and his Sweet Knits for Babies book. Anna Maria Milani says, I'm knitting more gifts now than I'm finding these beautiful yarns at Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl. Oh, As a matter sweet. of fact, I'm in the middle of knitting a hat for Paul. For Paul? Well, maybe I added that part in. Oh. <laughs> All right, Jody, I love this sweater. This is Freya, this one. Really? I love this sweater. Now, what is the stitch we've got here? Okay, I call it double moss stitch. It's also known as Irish moss stitch. And it can also be called uh, double seed stitch. So it's three different things. So whatever you call it, um, in the in the book, is, are, is, the, is there the instruction to create the stitch? Of course, yeah. I've right. always called it double moss stitch in the books. Right. Yeah, double moss stitch. That's, and then there's the instruction on how to create it. Just this, yeah. there would be the the uh, chart for the di for the diamond pattern. So the, the when you're you're looking at a different stitch yeah. in a pattern, the designer will often, as they should always, put in the directions to create that stitch. Even if it's you've very, done it before, they still give that to you. It's a very simple stitch. It's a four row pattern of P. It's basically knit two rows of rib. And then you do two rows of rib on top of that, but one stitch off. Oh, oh, for the for the for the double the double yeah. one stitch. I see. Okay, yeah. That's how simple it is. Yeah. Susan Lucas says yes. Knit smaller gifts: hats, scarves, cowls, mittens, and knit gifts for baby showers. Usually hats and blankets. And Anna Maria says, "Love you, Paul. We'll definitely make you a hat." <laughs> <laughs> And also with that pattern as well, it comes in a long version and a short version. I was going to bring that up. I'm glad you remembered to do that before I did. Uh, yes, in in our on our website we have two different listings for the Freya sweater. One is the short version, and one is the long. So the the short version is kind of like a hip length. It is, yeah. Yeah, it's very yeah. boxy, yeah. And also with the sleeves as well, you can turn back the cuffs. Oh, that's right. I forgot to do yeah, that before the show. So, yeah, so that's not... Uh... Wear them up all down. Jillian Goldrich says, so many projects, so little time. Did, does Jillian know she won? Jillian, do you know that you won tonight? Your name was drawn out of the box. <laughs> there we go. So that just kind of puts the sleeve in a little better place, too. Yeah, really pretty. And I love it in all those colors. I love just the, the again, the color palette on this yarn is just so beautiful. Thank you. And yeah, it's I, I want to knit everything, Jody. Your, your, your fashions are just great. Uh, so moving on with the... Oh, hold on. Karen Benavengo says, ben what Cibango. is... Ben Cibango. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> what is that stitch on the Freya called? It's beautiful. It's the double cross stitch. Yeah. Now, I can't wear this. I was going to have you model this, Paul. Oh, all right. Let's, let's, let's let Paul, Paul's oh, going to model it just like for that. Us. Don't move it, because then you'll be out of the frame. Well, I don't need, I don't need to be in the frame, because you're the person who's going to be wearing that. Hold on one moment, please. We have a, we have a new uh, model. You look like um, Kilroy was here. Is that no, better? The other way. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a perfect fit for you, Paul. <laughs> it's even COVID friendly. <laughs> Will you please turn the, the collar down? Thank you. Look how nice that looks on him. Look. And that's only a medium. Wow. That's a medium? Uh, the second size, yes, yeah, very <laughs> oversized. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> okay, Paul. <laughs> Winter bear. <laughs> Very lovely. Thank you so much for being our model for that. It look, really looks good on you, honey. Thank you. This is what I was saying about make sure you look at the finished measurements of the garments as well. Because like, I expect Paul normally takes an extra large or a large, but that's a medium. What are you saying, Jody? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty. Let's, let's go. Let's move along here and let's see if we can... Uh, if we can get some here oh you know what let's see if i can do this i'm not as good with the camera as paul is so whoa jody tell us about this lovely design okay this is a wrap that goes around the shoulders it's looks it complicated there's only about four or five different cables in no actually there's more than that isn't there i can just see there's more than five. <laughs> well we've got we've got one and then we've got two I think it's about three. 10 cables in there, actually. <laughs> Quite a it's lot. not a three-hour project, is it, Jody? I said two and a half hour, that one. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, actually, I next week on the show, we're going to do a cable. We're going to Next week is going to be a cable show. So that'll be fun, because I'll take a couple of different cables that you have in here, and we'll do a little demo on this. But this is a fun a fun wrap. And I remember what people are you know afraid of cables because it's only putting stitches on hold leaving them at the front or the back that's right you know? there's really nothing to do with yeah. a cable it's not hard yeah. at all but there is a little tip that i will give everyone you know if they don't know it if you bring the cable needle to the front this the cable always go to the left if you put the cable needle to the back the cables always go to the right that's right i always think about right or rear so if i'm putting yeah. the cable if i'm putting the the holding the, the stitches in the back is yeah. going to go to the right from the rear. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. This is really fun. I have not had a chance to get this on our website. What? Let me find the name of this. This is the one that I have not gotten on. I this think it's is Milia. 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 And um, let me very quickly look in the the Hoogie book. I think we've got some very important comments we need to read here. Okay. We see a GQ model in the making, Paul. Oh, good Lord. Very nice, Paul. Looking good, Paul. <laughs> the wrap is to die for. Love it, Paul. You're a great model. All right. Enough for Paul. All right. Let me see. I'm trying to find the, so that I can give the folks the number of skeins that they need for that wrap. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so you'll need five or seven. So what does it come in two different lengths? It comes in two different lengths. Yeah, the whips are the same, but there's a different length. Okay, so it would be 61 or 78 inches long. The shorter one takes five skeins of Undiemo, and the longer takes seven. So I'll get that one up on the website. In the meantime, just remember five and seven skeins if you want to order your, your colors um, exclusive of the book. We can get the book. Um, we can get the book into, you know, we'll order the book separately. Sorry about that. I couldn't get all those words out at once that were going through my head. Um, Paula, can yeah. you just show the chart for people to see the charts, how I do the chart? Absolutely. Just, uh, people always ask me what are my charts like to follow. And they, to me, they look very clear. So this is a different this is a different pattern. But I'll find the one for the there. You get the pattern repeat on the right hand side of it, everything. Let me find that. Um is there okay, so here. Right. We've got now tell us about these little Okay, so you've got the stitch symbols down there, and you'll find the abbreviations of cables with that pattern as well, which will come under the special abbreviations. The standard abbreviation is always in the back of the book. Right. But, okay, well, I don't want you to keep flicking through the book to find what that means. So I'll put all the special ones with each individual pattern to save you flicking through. Right. Okay. So you've got your your cable 6B and C6F, and they're all going throughout. Yeah. So when, when you're reading a chart, we know we go from right to left. Yes, for the right side rows and the left, right side, right. The wrong and side. So 
I don't know how the rest of you read your charts or how you decipher your charts. One of the things that I do with mine is um, sometimes like I might take this and make a copy of this page so that I don't muck up the book in case I want to do it again or when I want to, you know, create that pattern again. And um, so then what I'll do is on my first few rows, I will write down what those what those symbols are, you know, right inside the symbol so that I and I'll enlarge it because it's easier to enlarge us and do and work a section at a time than sometimes trying to work off off the small, you know, a, a smaller piece. So um, your the your charts and your instructions are always very clear. I, I do enjoy knitting your patterns because the the directions are always very clear and. Um, I'm always putting stitch counts in everywhere as well. Yeah. I noticed that even in Kevin it. Shaw, because your cut yeah. your stitch count changes every time in the border. I put the stitch count in. As a matter of fact, Jan Tolt says Jody's charts are very easy to follow. They are. That's they good. are really easy to follow. So so don't be intimidated by charts. You know, I've I've seen people take charts and turn them into spreadsheets. Um, it, it, and if you just take your time. And when you're not going to, when you're not knitting something, look at a chart and decipher that chart so that you start to learn how to read it and you understand what the repeats are. If they only give you a, you know, an, a small section of eight stitches, but you know it's an eight stitch repeat and you've got to go across your whole pattern. Um, it, it's once you take the time, I always tell people you didn't learn how to walk in one day. You didn't, if you would have put the bicycle down the first time you fell, you'd still be on a tricycle. So, you know, you've got to keep practicing and practicing in order to get these things right so that you get to the point where you actually enjoy them. And also in all my booklets at the back of the, on the back pages, there's also all the information, how to read charts. And That's not information on how to read a chart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but right all here, right here, you've got all your information. Working from a chart is right here. Yeah. There's also a glossary from English to American and everything. Yeah. Do you have any Dutch? No. No. <laughs> I speak Dutch sometimes. <laughs> I oh and I love it. This is this is a really I love the indicator on your on your patterns when you've got your little logos, one, two, and three for your experience or your um, your um, level of knowledge and expertise in knitting. And I also put how to care about the yarn, you know, and about the yarn there as well. And which is really important, you know, especially when you're giving folks that are, that are knitting and giving gifts. Uh, I, I like to include a little, even if I just cut the label that has the care instructions on it and put that in with the card, you know, with the gift card so that the recipient knows how to care for that. Because it, you, most of the times, or a lot of the times, we're not using that yarn that is a, a, an acrylic or a, a, a super wash wool. So you want to make sure that you include those instructions with them. So uh, so the Heige, or Hoogi book has lots of fun patterns in it. I um, think is that all the garments we have from that one? I think it is. So you know what that means, Paul. What does that mean? That means nitty gritty. It means it's time to uh, give away some yarn. Wait a minute. More. You mean we're giving away more yarn? We are giving away more yarn because. So tell them what they're gonna win, nitty gritty yarn okay, girl. Okay, this so we're gonna pull two more names, and we are going to give away a two skeins one each i have a gray uh, what is that one called is that called smoked i think it's called smoky smoky and the other is frost i know this is frost because that's what i knitted with so frozen 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 that one, yeah frozen not frost on the ammo on the ammo okay i'm coming i'm coming you know what you have sweater fuzz on your head okay well, we know it's not here. <laughs> pick a name. All righty then. Pie. We're going to shake it up. We're going to pick out a very special one. Oh, by the way, someone told me that their wine was chilling all day waiting for the show tonight. Thank you so much, and I wish I were you. <laughs> now, we don't recommend drinking wine and knitting because it makes for pulling out in the morning. Yes, yes. Ripping, ripping, ripping. 
Okay. Oh. Leslie Welsh Flaherty. Congratulations, Leslie, Leslie Welsh Flaherty. Flaherty. You are the lucky winner of Andiamo. Of Andiamo. Okie dokie. And we've got another winner coming right up. Who wants to win? I do. <laughs> All right. Okay. Our last lucky winner today. Well, and maybe the not. winner is. Maybe it's not our last lucky winner. You never know on our show. You know, we've had a lot of sharing, and sharing is caring. Teresa March. Teresa, Teresa March. 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 Congratulations. You are our lucky winner. March. Thank you. Oh, March. I'm sorry. March. Not March. March. Teresa March. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you for sharing Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl. And we do appreciate that. So I thought, since those are the two new books, Jody. There is another yarn that I absolutely love that uh, is one of yours, and that is Alba. I actually have uh, one of my elves, Pam Atkins, is currently knitting a sweater um, in Alba. I couldn't get it done in time for the show tonight, but I just love this yarn. And we've got a couple of different patterns here or different different fashions here with using Alba. So let's see. Oopsie. We can't turn her around. She doesn't turn very easily. She's not a ballerina, this one. So let's just take a peek at this is the, um, this is called the, the fallen, fallen Leaf. So tell us about Alba. Okay, so Alba is a 50% merino yarn with 25% alpaca and 25% viscous. It's extremely lengthy as well. I think it's 350 meters per 100 gram ball. So the short bear took four balls. And there was quite a bit left over in the fourth ball as well. Yep. Yeah, you've got 382 yards. Yep, 50% wool, a packet, and viscose. And um, the, the colors are so rich in this. And I, I love that little tweed effect in there. It's a very soft tweed as well. With yeah. the alpaca, it's extremely soft. Yes, it is. It is. As a matter of fact, someone... What did they just, I just had a customer. Oh, they're using this for their descent cowl. Um, there's a Ruth Bader Ginsburg commemorative type cowl that's out there. And uh, one of our customers chose that and she wasn't sure what she wanted. So I, I did a little FaceTime tour of the shop with her of the studio here. And she was able to choose her yarn. But look at the pretty colors in that. It's also easy care as well. It can be machine washed and just lay flat to dry. Nice, nice. Look, look at the colors on this side, Paul. I love, I love the the orange and the blue in here. The black or that really charcoal gray. I mean, when I say machine wash, it is okay to a thirty or forty degree, but I would still put it on a woolen wash on the machine. Oh yeah. But it's nice to know that it even is hand washable. You yeah. Know, I, mm -hmm. I do a lot of, or just gentle cycle, cool water. And, yeah. uh, you know, our machines today, if you have a newer machine, they do so much. They do so much thinking for us yeah. that uh, delicate washes are, are well taken care of. Donna Nahalo says, beautiful wrap in the Alba. That on mm -hmm. the website? Yes. Yes. And again, it's, it's called... It's called the Fallen Leaf Shawl. Whoops, the label's in the way there. Yep, and we have it in all the, you know, we all the, all the colors are available there. So y'all may remember that we, in the beginning, we had only kits on the website. And we've gotten to the point where now we have the yarns by the weight, you know, by yarns, by the skein as well. So if you see, if you like a yarn particularly, but you know, you're, you're not in the mood to knit any of the projects that we've been looking at, those yarns are all available for you to, uh, to purchase by the skein. Paul? Did you say y'all? Y'all. I said y'all. I didn't know they said y'all in New Jersey. <laughs> We're not in New Jersey. We're not in Kansas anymore, Paul. <laughs> Heather, Heather, nope. Heather Campbell says, Jody, what is your favorite apres knit thing to do? A-P-R-E-S. Is that a knitting term? Apre. Oh. Like apre ski. And that's, that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, like, I'm not sure what she means by that. Are you getting that, Jody? Not really, no. Oh. 
Okay, so let's see if she can if she can phrase it differently. And Lorraine Schiller wants to know, hi, Jody, do you name your garments? Or I do, how yeah. do you name your garments? Oh, how do I name them? Okay, so like the Huggy collection, with Huggy is very Scandinavian, so I went with Scandinavian names. The Alba means Scotland in Gaelic. So the names on that's mostly Scottish names. It's just like a theme, you know. Then I've got coastline yarn as well. So all the designs are beaches where I used to live in England. Um, it's just, you know, it all has a theme and just carries on from there. And Heather Campbell wants to know, what do you like to do other than knitting? Eat. <laughs> That's my second favorite thing too. Well, mine is martinis. <laughs> Mine's walking the dog. <laughs> oh, that was funny. I knit and then I eat and then I sleep. That's pretty good. It eat, knit, sleep, repeat, right? Yes. <laughs> that sounds like a t-shirt. Uh so where where are we still have a little time? Well, it depends on how long time you're talking about. We normally do a 30-minute show, and we're at 56 minutes and 34 seconds. Well, good. So we do have a, another couple of minutes, because I did give everyone fair warning that we would be closer to an hour than we uh, would be to 30 minutes. So while, while we are having a couple of minutes left, I was able to snag a few samples of Jody's chow and some baby knits so those of you who love the baby knits um chow is just it's, it's not just for babies this yarn is just such a beautiful yarn um jody tell tell us a little bit about alba i mean about chow okay chow is 100 percent super wash merino and it's super fine as well so it's extremely springy it's got great stitch definition it's ideal for color work uh, slip stitches. It's just an all good rounded yarn. It it's a fabulous yarn, and uh, y'all, you all, you all. Um, I'm sure <laughs> I can't say y'all anymore. I get in trouble if I do. I knitted up a little baby sweater so that you know we could see the stitch definition and how the stitches work in that. And uh, I just love. Look at this little hat. I don't have any little. I don't have any little mannequins in in the store. I should get some of those. And look at look at the poncho that goes with it. Karen Bensavengo says, "Knit, pray, love." Knit, pray, love. Yep, that's right. I think that was a book. So this is a Rocco poncho. Isn't that adorable? Uh, nothing like making knitting cables for a baby or a little one. I mean, that's just precious. Thank Pamela, you. I think you have a little niece who might enjoy that. <laughs> really cute. So um, tell us about this little poncho, because I love it. I to, it was very French inspired. I was looking through magazines and I saw a lot of ponchos on children. And, but they were mostly made in fabric, you know, like fleece with the tassels. And I thought, okay, I can interpret that. But I didn't want a Scottish tartan theme. I wanted more of a French inspired thing. Well, so that's what it came about. So look how cute that is. Wee oui, wee. Oui. That's adorable. I love I love the little beret. Bonjour. Really cute. You could add on to that as well, you know. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And what this this hat might fit me. You know how I'm always joking about put it on, come on, put it on, put it on. No, Jody, <laughs> you stinker. Let me see. I don't even know how to wear a beret. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I have to do this, right? See, I just don't look good in hats. Susan Lucas says love will go on the list. So what do you think, hon? Maybe not quite that way. <laughs> okay. Maybe one more size up and it'll fit. Side? It just I... needs to be light and fluffy on the top of your head with a little twist on the side. Well, I can't do that. Otherwise, right. you look like the Michelin person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Jody, let's. I, while we're standing here, I just want to go. I want to go to your to the book that I'm looking for, where all these beautiful baby patterns are. This is a sweet knits for baby. Love this book. The if only thing I can say is, if you really want your copies, order it now. It is extremely fast at selling out. 
the yeah. publishers can reprint again, but because of COVID, there's a big delay on it as well. Love so if you really it. want that book, order it now. That's the only thing I can say. Thank you for sharing that information with us because you are, how many times has this been reprinted already, Jody? Uh, five. Yeah. Look at this. We have this little sweater here. Isn't that adorable? So we do have this book in stock. Um, and if we need to get a couple more, I hope that we can manage that. So if, as Jody said, if you if this is something you're interested in. Kelly Kohlhofer says, would the velour shawl work up well in a in the Alba yarn? Um, no. Because, uh, no, it wouldn't because the velour shawl is super bulky and the Alba is like a DK. Right. Right. So what about in an Andiamo? It would work in Andiamo. Yeah. So something to think about. Brenda Dixonberger says Sorry. you look cute in everything, even hats. And Karen <laughs> Bensavenga says Julia says you look cute in the beret, Paulette. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Oh, that's very kind of you. Um, and also, the reason why that baby book is selling out extremely fast as well is there's 30 designs in that book for $20. Yeah, it's, it's a fabulous book. It really is. Yeah. And I did ask my cousin, um, I promised my cousin I was going to make a, a sweater for her baby. And I, when I was looking through this, I just, I saw the one I'm going to do. And it's this one. This is going to be absolutely beautiful. Her little guy's going to be a year old. This is perfect. So I think that's, that's going to be. The three-year-olds as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. The, the sizes in here go up to three. Yeah. Because that's every pattern is naught to three. Not one design's three, one design's two-year-old. All of them are graded from naught to three. Right. Right. That's what I love about your about your your designs, even in your even in your adult, everything is, you know, all of them go up to the the double yeah. X, at least in the books that I've seen. Yeah, everything. Um, yep, that's great. That's great. So I think we've come to the end of our show. Um, Jody, was there anything else you wanted to share with the crowd tonight? Uh, any ideas? Any any thoughts for the spring? Anything coming up good? Anything? There is new yarns in the work. I'm already swatching with them now, but it's a bit early to show you, but it's extremely oh. smooth, silky smooth. Lovely. Well, we will look forward to the to the spring and summer line. Um, th that's great. Everyone, thank you so much for being with us tonight. What a wonderful night. I love that we gave so many fun things away. Uh, if you have not been on our website or you have not seen our announcement on Facebook, our nearly spring retreat is posted. We've got registrations coming in already. We're so excited about that. Almost as excited as we are to have had Jody Long on our show tonight. Jody, Thank thanks you. so much for being with us. It was, a, you know, it was our pleasure, our absolute pleasure. And I know it was at the pleasure of all of our fans as well. So we'll see you all here on Facebook. Keep an, keep an eye out and remember to keep sharing. See you next week. Bye-bye.